Ladies and gentlemen, let's show gaming to the com video. Intel's Skylake S processor roadmap has actually been leaked onto the internet. And this roadmap would indicate that the previous leaks concerning the amount of performance that we're going to be seeing from the desktop CPUs, more specifically as well, the number of cores, their clock speed, and so on and so forth, is pretty darn accurate. Now, what we're going to be seeing is a variety of SKUs being released, with 10 SKUs actually being released in the third quarter of 2015. And the, the one little weird thing is that the roadmap has mentioned just 5 SKUs since the rest are part of the low power TDP, uh, TDP branding. So, of course, the top end is going to be the 6700K, then you've got the 6600K, then you've got the 6700, 6600, 6500, 6400, and so on and so forth. If you're wondering why I'm blasting through this, it's because it's very part and parcel of what we've seen even since Sandy Bridge. The 6700, for example, uh, either the K or the regular uh, features, of course, 8 threads, which, of course, comes from... Uh, a quad core design with obviously hyper threading and it's going to be running at a minimum of 4 gigahertz and boosts up to 4.2 naturally all of these processors are going to support DDR4 memory 213300 uh, and supposedly it's going to also support a DDR3L 1600 memory as well I've got to say that I'm not really surprised that these previous leaks and rumours actually turned out to be pretty damn accurate. I'm a little disappointed, as I've mentioned a dozen times now, that we've not seen a situation where Intel have actually increased the number of cores. Yes, of course, we've got, say, Broadwell, but I was really hoping that Skylake would really start to push that as well. Um, and I believe the best way of summarising my opinions on this is I think that the 6700K or basically any of Intel's higher end CPUs, I'd really like to see them switch to a to a six core design uh, at this point. But obviously, they do have processors like the 5000 series, which already do this. But still, that's just my opinion on the matter, which I've voiced a dozen times now. So I'm not going to reiterate it for the one billionth time. But anyway, I guess we can say to ourselves, well, at least we know what's coming. I've had a few people ask me, um, either in comments or via private messages, when Skylake comes out, should I upgrade? Well, now that we know the roadmaps are revealed, and this is part of a much larger conversation, but my basic advice to you is the following. Do you need to upgrade? Not do you want to upgrade, not do I want something shiny inside my case. Do you need to upgrade? In other words, if you've got a million pounds, if you're, you know, if money's not an object, sure, upgrade, why not? If on the other hand you're on a fairly limited budget and you look at all the technologies that are coming out, I'd say the CPU upgrades are not that big of a deal at the moment. You've obviously got the Fiji GPUs which are popping out over the next couple of months and Nvidia are going to be releasing their GPUs like the the Thai. Assuming it's called the Thai, we don't know at the time of recording. It could be called, you know, the the teddy bear, the 980 teddy bear. But let's assume that you have something along the lines of a 2500K, which a lot of gamers bought back in the day. Is it worth you upgrading? Well, if you've clocked the processor to a decent amount, probably not. The only way I'd consider it is if you was to jump to a 6700K, in which case, possibly. The only problem we're going to have with that is that you're obviously going to have to spend the money for the DDR4 and all of your bits and bobs as well. Um, obviously, DDR4 is the way really you want to be jumping if you're going to be uh, upgrading anyway. Um, so, my answer to you is probably not. I'd wait. Uh, another reason you're going to wait is because AMD are going to be releasing their Zen. And honestly, if you look at it in a very cold, harsh, light of day kind of way, DirectX 12 and most multi-threading advancements are not going to happen until the end of the year. Even if Microsoft were to magically say, oh, okay, DirectX 12 and Windows 10 is done tomorrow, which obviously they're not going to, but let's just magically say they did, 
and let's see if it's say that one or two games were also ready tomorrow, which they're not, but let's just assume that they were on this magical fantasy land that we're constructing. It's going to be at least a couple of months before games really, really start to fly off the shelves, which are DirectX 12 ready, and it's really going to be the end of the year, slash early next year, that all of the engines fully benefit from DirectX 12. So what I'm basically saying to you is for now I'd probably just deal with the processor you've got, unless you've got something along the lines of an i5-750, something along those lines, maybe a little slower, and you're finding maybe you're having some problems now, especially in other tasks, then maybe. But if you're GPU limited, so for example, let's just assume that you're running something along the lines of a GTX 760, but you're, you've just bought a 1440p monitor, or even a higher resolution monitor, then obviously the GPU is the way forward. Anyway, I, I know that's not exactly necessarily what you signed up for, in my opinion on that, when you kind of jumped into the video. But there's articles of this, there's an article uh, concerning... Um, the processor and you know the, all the relevant specifications in the video description if you do want to be reminded of uh, the official specifications but we've been through them so many times in rumors i think most of you are aware of them so instead i just wanted to confirm hey they're actually quite accurate but for now i'm gonna get going so take care and bye for now